Hey guys, Chris Field here. Super excited to be with you today and to go to Ghana and to teach you all about one of my favorite places in the entire world. So while we're waiting for everybody to get on this afternoon, go ahead and drop me a comment telling me where you're from. I see some familiar names logging in, but I love to see where some of the other viewers are from. We have people all over the world who have been watching the videos this week. So drop a comment and tell me where you're watching this video from. I'd love to see just the all the different places that we have people logging in from. So I'll read some of them for those who aren't seeing the comments. Florida, New York, that's awesome. East Coast folks. See who else we have. California, Iola, Texas, Melissa Perez. Used to play baseball with a bunch of boys from Iola, Texas. Kate is joining from Wisconsin. That's pretty awesome. We got North Carolina, Maryland, South Lake, which is in the DFW area, Ohio, Virginia, oh, Canada. We got our first international, first international visitor, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Chicago. Oh, yeah, checking them all. You guys are awesome. Lila's from College Station. Hey, Lila. All right, you guys are awesome. So I'm going to give it about one more minute until we kick things off, but. I'm super excited. Selfishly, I know the giraffe was awesome. I know the police station was awesome. I know the yoga yesterday was awesome, but selfishly, I've been very excited about today because this was the day I marked out to be able to share with you about one of my favorite places in the whole world. It's a place called Ghana, Africa. So I'm gonna tell you all, all about that today. Even though we can't go there, I want you to know more about that country by the time you finish this little uh, adventure with me than you knew when you started, which won't be very hard for some of you because some of you don't know anything about Ghana, Africa. So let's start with this. How many of you have heard of Africa? Raise your hands if you've heard of Africa before. Anybody? Anybody heard of Africa? All right, here's a tricky question though. Focus on this one. Is Africa a country or a continent? Is Africa a country or a continent? Now, even some grown-ups don't get this right. Africa is a continent and it is huge. It's massive. There's many maps. When you see a map, they usually don't even put Africa the right size on the map because it's so big. It's a huge continent full of many people. And the place we're going to talk about today is the only place I've ever been to in Africa, and it's called Ghana. So it's spelled G H A N. Say that with your parents. Say the word Ghana. Say it out loud. That's right. It's in West Africa. So let me show you on the map here. So here we are. I got my globe here. So I live, everything's backwards for me, so that's a bit of a struggle. I live here. Oh boy. I live here in oh man, this is like a a uh this is like a test if you've had too much to drink. All right, I live here in Texas. And when I go to Ghana, I fly all the way across the ocean, all the way, all that blue is ocean, 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 ocean. And I fly right here to Ghana, Africa. It's in West Africa. And it takes almost 24 hours to get there. Have you ever? Ever flown for almost 24 hours? Now it's not one flight. Usually, flight. But I leave my house to the time I land in Ghana is almost 24 hours. That's a whole day. 
So if you wake up at seven in the morning and you go to school and you come home and you have dinner and you take a bath and you go to bed and you go to sleep and you wake up the next day, I'm just getting to go the next day. So it's a long time on an airplane. So 10 years ago, before most of you were even born, I went to Africa for the first time. And it was a great experience for me. So many awesome people, so many nice people. And I got to go in villages that I'm going to show you in a book in just a minute. I got to meet all kinds of people I've met before. And it was so incredible for me to meet people that looked different than me and they talk differently than me. And I got to meet people who didn't even know were around the world. And the coolest thing that happened was the picture I posted this morning. Some of your parents might have shown you. And it's the thing that I'm wearing right here. So I'm going to stand up so you can see it here. This is a special Ghana shirt, even though it's more like a smock because it kind of does like that. Ooh, that's kind of fun, right? All right, so listen to this story. So I started going to Ghana all the time. I started doing what I could to help some of the people there. And I wanted to do what I could to help some of the people. And the people that I was helping, they saw that I wanted to help them and they wanted to do something for me to tell me thanks, to tell me that they appreciated that I was doing what I could to help them. And so they told me they were going to make me a chief, a real chief. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before, but they were going to make me president of their little village. Well, I didn't know what that meant when they told me they were going to make me a chief, but I knew it sounded awesome. And I knew that I wanted to be a chief. I told them to come there and I was going to do whatever they needed me to do. So we had this huge ceremony. It was a huge ceremony. And we had a cow that we had to bring to the ceremony. I had to buy a cow and bring it to the ceremony. And they were going to use the cow for food later after I already left. So we have this cow there. And all of a sudden, I started hearing these drums. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Boom, 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 boom. These are this beautiful African beat. Boom, 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 boom. Make that noise with your parents. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, it was incredible, these drums. So I'm looking around, trying to see where the drums coming from. And here come these men and their drummers. And they came all the way from another town that was far away. I didn't even know where this town was. People told me, oh, they came from this other special place. And I had never heard And all of a sudden, people came and they started drumming, drumming, drumming. It was incredible. And then they told me something that kind of freaked me out a little bit. They told me I had to dance. Now listen, I'm not a dancer to do the best that I could because all these people were gathered in a big circle just waiting and watching me to dance. And I, dance. I, I didn't really know how to do their special dances. I knew, I knew people were waiting for me to dance. And so I got up and I started dancing. And there was one special dance. It went like this. Can you do that? Huh? That's what they were doing. But with the drums, it said like this. Boom, 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 boom. So I started doing the dance. It was so hot that I was sweating much. 
I was sweating so much in the, in the, on this big meeting with all these people watching me. I was sweating coming out of my face and they're drumming. All of them. These ladies came up to us and they started sprinkling this on my head. And I don't know why, I still don't know why they were baby powder. And they just started dripping it in my head. So we just started dancing and we just started doing all the, the ways that they were celebrating. We had this huge ceremony and that was the story of the time that I got to be a chief in Ghana, Africa. And let me tell you the best part of the story. They gave me a name, chief. They gave me a chief. And I see the comments that are saying about the sound. I'm honestly not sure what to do about that. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I had some sort of sound. There's no no way for me to do that. But I appreciate you guys letting me know. I'm just going to keep going, though. They gave me a name for chief. The name they gave me, you have to try to say this with your parents. You ready? The chief name was Gariba. Can you say that? Let me say it again. Gariba. And means chief of development. And development means helping. So they gave me this special chief name, Chief Gariba, and it was Chief of Development. And then we told him we had to leave the chief ceremony. And a man walked up with a rifle, a gun. And I, know and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I asked the people, what is this guy here for? And they said, he's a hunter, and he's here to protect you. And so, all the way back to the place where we had parked our boat, this hunter walked next to me and protected me. Even though there wasn't really anything to be protected from, that was his job. And that was pretty awesome. I want to do, guys, I want to read you a book about Ghana. So this isn't just a book about Ghana. This is actually a book that I, I'm author on this book. And a friend who is an incredible artist actually drew all of the pictures on this. And it's about our work that our organization is doing in Ghana, Africa. So let me see if I can make this to where you guys see it. I am very excited to show you guys. So we've had a couple people that have said that all of the emojis might be messing up the sound. I'm not sure if that's true, but maybe if you encourage your children not to bang the emoji tab constantly, maybe that will help all, all of your issues with the uh, sound. All right. So let me read this book to you guys. It's called Under the Mango Tree. It's a story of friendship and freedom. And again, I'm the author of this book. And my friend Gretchen Nixon is the illustrator. So she drew of these pictures that you're doing, right. So let me read it to you guys. And let me say for the last time, very sorry. But there's nothing I'm going to be able to, to do about that, so I apologize. So I'm just going to keep going for those who can hear me. And we may switch to YouTube Live next week and see if that's better. But for now, here we are. And at least we're safe and happy in our homes. All right? All right. Under the mango tree. There's the title page. Here we go. So this is a true story. Well, based on true story of what we're doing in Ghana. Here we go. Every life tells a story and I get to see them all. I am the sky 
and I observe all of the world from high above. I watch each person adds his or her page to the world's storybook. I watch children like you go to school and read books and have birthday parties. Have any of you ever had a birthday party? I bet you have. I watch the waves all around you as you splash and swim under a sun that kisses your cheeks. I watch you run and play with your friends and I hear your laughter as it floats toward my clouds. But not every life story is a happy one. Far across the ocean from where you live, there are many little boys and girls who are working on wooden boats on a huge lake called Lake Volta in Ghana, Africa. I see no splashing in these waters or running and playing with friends, and I hear no laughter. I see these young boys and girls fish so many hours each day that the sun begins to burn away their childhood. They do not fish with a pole and slimy worms or sit on lake banks with family and friends. This is fishing with heavy nets and dives into dangerous waters and sore muscles, cuts, and scrapes. I watched the stories of many of these children begin. Most of them come from families in small villages where there's little food and even less hope. The parents in these families have no money, so they trade or sell their children to fishermen who promise to give the children food, clothes, and a place to sleep. But the story changes when the children arrive in their new homes in the fishes. The fisher boys and girls work all day from sunrise to sunset. They have no time for the kinds of activities that little boys and girls should be doing. They do not go to school or play games or laugh. Instead, they wear dirty clothes have hungry stomachs, and live in tired bodies. Every day I watch the children suffer, laboring in the water, staring with empty eyes into the sky. The fishermen who own the children are old and tired. They have been fishing too long. Some of them, most of them, even started as fisher boys themselves. A sad story that continues to be written over and over. The number of fish the fishermen catch is small. The waters are rough and the sun is hot. Their wrinkled faces carry the weight of a life that's been too hard. All right. Here's where I come into the story. One day, I watch visitors come into the village. That was me. Their clothes and words and stories are different than anything the fishermen have ever seen before. All of this is a little bit scary, but also exciting. This is where you get the title of the book right here, Under the Mango Tree. See that big mango tree? A meeting between the fishermen and the visitors is held under a huge mango tree in the middle of the village, the place of all important meetings. I know this tree well. Raindrops from my clouds nourished it when it was still just a few small seeds in the grounds. Now this tree is huge and provides fruit 
and shade and comfort to the villagers. Have you ever had a mango, guys? You like mangoes? They're good. It's here, under the mango tree, that a new idea begins to take root. It is here that the visitors offer a new story in which little boys and girls are free and able to go to school and in which fishermen have new ways to fish. The freedom and hope begins to grow branches and spread through the minds of the people in the village. Ideas are shared along with big plates of banku. Can you say banku? That's the special food they eat in Ghana. It's kind of a funny word for us. Banku. Can you say it? Banku. Over time, strangers become partners and visitors become friends. The seeds of good, having been watered and fed, begin to grow a new and more beautiful story for everyone. The lake waters will soon be filled with big cages and of children. The fishermen will learn a new way to fish. And when they do, they will send the small boys and girls back to their parents to be children again. A new story has already begun. When the boys and girls go home, I'll be watching from the sky as fishing nets are replaced with soccer balls. Annual labor will be traded for books and learning. I look forward to watching the children learn to love the water instead of fear it. They must all walk a long road of healing, but I know they will not travel it alone. The fishermen back in the village also have a long journey ahead. Learning new ways is never easy, but they won't walk alone either. The visitors who became friends built a house nearby. Meetings and the shades of food will continue under that big mango tree as they keep learning from one another. All right, this is the last page. This is for you, kiddos. You ready? Each one of us, including you, children, are like the seeds of that big mango tree. A little water, a lot of love, and our branches will grow tall and wide. The fruit of our lives can feed many. This can be our story if we choose for it to be. If every life tells a story, we must make sure it's a story worth telling and a story that changes the world. The page, you, my child, can change the world. The page you add to the world's storybook can be beautiful and life giving. So let us give until every boat is empty and all of us are free. So I saw some of you saying that this is like a story a bit. And I also felt sad for me. But then, like the story said, we got the chance to start helping some of the kids. So did any of you know what we did to help the kids? That's right. We taught fishermen to use the children to work. We taught the fishermen how to fish in a different way so they didn't need to use the children. And because of that, and 50 children stop working and go back to their families. And every single one of those children are now going to school and they're gonna be able to have jobs and to do awesome stuff with their lives. Never had the chance to do otherwise. And so we wrote this book under the mango tree so that we could teach 
question like you about the children in Ghana. And, and the other reason is we want you to know that even if you don't get to go to Ghana, there's still people you can help. Do you know a lot of us are getting to help people staying in our houses by washing our by making sure that we're not going to places where we might get to a right now that we're helping and there's so many other ways for us to help. I would like for you to ask your parents to have you leave a comment. So I think you can help somebody. Anything you can write. How can you help someone in your family? Or maybe you can help someone in your neighborhood. You can help someone all the way in the world like I did. Some of these things. Let's I'm looking for I think of any ways that, that you have the comments over here. So do you think in the world that people do need our help right now? If, if there's some okay, good, let me change this right here. Jenny or Jenny's daughter said she will clean up trash in her neighborhood. Amazing. I love that. Uh, uh, another boy or girl said, I help the earth by picking up trash. Awesome. Another lady said, they're writing letters. Yeah, there's a lot of people right now that are lonely. So if we can write letters or draw them pictures, them, that's help by littering. We can help by by loving people. That, that's right. School. We can help someone go to the nurse when they get hurt. We can give people food. Old people right now, so they don't have to go to the store. That's right. One of the messing boys with that one. So there are guys, we can help people by being kind. And that's really what the book is about. It's not really about mango trees. It's not even really about me or or my organization called Mercy Project. It's really about us, each one of us, whether we're young or old or somewhere in the middle. It's about us making the decision that we're going to help people. And like I said, one of the best we can help people right now in our country, in our world, is by staying in our houses and making sure we don't make anyone get sick. So that I didn't even know about that when I wrote this book. I know about that. So that's, that's a real. I'm going to tell you guys really quick. Uh, we don't have a lot of copies of this book left right now. But if you did want to buy these books, you can send me a message on this page and I'll message you about it. I think we've only got 20 or 30 of the books left right now, but we can it's about ordering more. And parents, for those of you who asked, in the comments about how you can learn more about our nonprofit called Mercy Project. You can just go to mercyproject.net. And one of the coolest things on the Mercy Project website is we have a chance to sponsor a child. And this is one of the children that was working and now is going to school. And you can actually send letters back and forth with the children. And you get to meet them, you get to know them. And so that's a really cool thing you can do right now to help people, but there's a thousand ways we can help people. And, and you're looking for letters to be kind and to do everything you can to love your neighbors uh, during this time that I know is it's kind of a hard time. We can't go to school, parents are working at home, and maybe we can't go to restaurants and parks and we can't play with our friends. I know that's kind of hard, but I also know that all you little boys and girls watching, you're very brave, and I know you're very strong, and I know you're very smart, and I know you have good hearts, and I know that you're going to be okay, and your mom and dad are going to keep you safe, and we're going to make sure we're all okay. Everything.
everything over and then everything's going to get back to to normal life like it is uh, like it was before before all of this okay so i really love sharing with you guys today again if, if you buy a copy of the book i don't have a lot left because we wrote this a couple years ago but you can just send me a message on the page also check out mercyproject.net and a lot of stuff on youtube videos and if you want I want to keep showing your kids that stuff and the website has a lot of information too so i'm super excited and thankful that you guys joined today i'm sorry about the glitchiness the sound i don't know what to tell you but i think we might change next week to youtube live i'll give you that link um, but i'm going to figure that out because i want you to be able to hear me so thanks for telling me what's happening but i really enjoyed you guys today really appreciate you logging in tomorrow we have a special art project we're gonna build fantasy castles i've got a lady who's amazing and makes incredible art projects kids how to do this. that's her job and she's going to teach you tomorrow how to make a fantasy castle which is going to be amazing so i'm going to post a playlist this afternoon very basic class everything you'll have around and tomorrow, tomorrow we're gonna fancy castles all right so i love you guys have a great rest of the day i'm gonna end this now and one last thing first alliance mortgage brian college station super generous to sponsor the videos this week give them a shout out if you need services they've been awesome you guys are awesome. We'll talk soon. To a goodbye from well in Ghana when they say goodbye, they just say bye bye oh bye bye oh. They just add the o oh to the end of bye bye. So say that as we go bye 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 oh. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.